<laughs> what are we talking about, Batman? Yeah, Batman Day is Saturday, the 19th, that's Saturday, right? I'm pretty sure that's Saturday. I don't know, I'll work Saturday, probably. Anyway, yeah, let's talk about Batman. Batman. The first... right. <laughs> so, Batman is a bat, and he's also a man. Not to be th- mistaken by Man Bat, who is a man who dresses as a bat. Batman is real. Did you see those giant bats in the Philippines? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like all those months ago? Have you ever just beat up an orphan? No. <laughs> Neither have I. I bet what? Batman has. <laughs> okay, um... This has gone to shit. We're early. talking about the first two Burton movies. Well, the only two Burton movies. To be fair, that Batman probably would have beat up an orphan. He probably would have. He probably would have shoved a bomb in his pants and just, like, pushed him down a flight of stairs and laughed at him. And then picked up the kid's dead body and then threw him down a bell tower. Yeah, I feel like this Batman's, like, more cold-blooded, but Ben Affleck's Batman definitely murdered more people. Yeah, Ben Affleck's Batman blew up a lot of cars. (laughs) Yeah. Blew up a lot of cars. Like, some of those guys might not have even been that bad of people. They were just kind of in the wrong area. I mean, at least all the people that... Uh, Keaton's Batman killed, they were, like, actively trying to kill him back. Like, they were shooting at him and stuff. Yeah, I like how there's there's actually an explanation of Ben Affleck, though. Like, he's went over the edge and he's gone too far. And Michael Keaton's just like, I'm just gonna murder people. Ah, guys, let's go! <laughs> They're bad anyway, we don't need them. Okay, so, uh, Batman 89. Mm-hmm. What you think? Batman 89, I think it had the best plot twist at the very end where it's like, did you know the Joker is the one who killed his parents? Jack Napier, guys. That was towards the end, I guess. Yeah, that was an awful, awful decision, I think. Nah, you're crazy. It was probably the best decision anybody's ever made. No, it's okay because it's his own thing, but uh, I just don't like Joker. I don't like Joker time. In Joker, like the movie Joker, it's fine. Because as long as that stays its own thing, which I hope it does. Even, I don't, but, yeah, no, I guess you're right. Yeah. I was about to say, he wasn't directly, in the movie Joker, he didn't directly kill his parents. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't, when it's a Batman movie, like, that's a Joker movie, so I don't really care. But when it's a Batman movie that's supposed to tie in and stuff, like this has a sequel, I don't like Joker connecting to Batman, like, to Bruce before he's Batman. Oh, don't. you don't like him to be the cause of him becoming Batman? No, not at all. Yeah, no, that's kind of silly. I just and I don't like Joker having like an origin, which in Joker it's fine because they do it way better than they do in this anyway. Because like you don't, you still don't know his origin, even though it is an origin story. The Dark Knight, I feel like, is the best example of how to do a Joker because yeah, because you don't know anything about you, him. You still to this day, people are speculating. Was what, what was it? He was a counter terrorist. Um, There's people that think he's like ex military and all. Yeah, that. Like, he like interrogated terrorists or something like that. Because when Batman was interrogating, he's like, you don't hit people in the head; it causes you become a little fuzzy or some shit. Whatever yeah. it was. Then he goes bang, and he's like, see? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that movie another time. Yeah, that movie's terrible. We I can probably do a whole episode on how bad that movie Yeah, is. how bad it is and how good Batman and Robin Yes, we'll is. have to do one on Batman and Robin because it's the best movie ever. Not just the best Batman movie. Yeah, did you know Batman and Robin is statistically the best movie that has ever been made? Like, yes. there's this, if you do a straw poll, it's 100%. Don't on rotten apples. Remember my my, yes. my website. Yeah, it's it's two hundred percent certified, not rotten, not certified fresh, certified not rotten. Mm-hmm. You can take that movie has such high ratings on my website that you can bake an apple pie with it. <laughs> yeah, go get the cool whip. We're we're making us a hot fresh apple pie. We're not even talking about that movie. Though. Yeah, what yeah, we we're supposed about? to be talking about Batman eighty nine. Dude, the bat plane in that thing was so fucking cool. I used to have the toy of the bat plane. <laughs> Dude, I still have that thing. Oh my, it's yeah. like this big. Like, I don't know, how, how big would you say that is? Like, like a pretty, foot? Pretty big, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. when the wings fold out, it's like a foot. That's cool. It was so cool. Dude, yeah, plane. Joker's giant gun that he shoots the bat wing down with, that was amazing. Yeah, He pulls that out of his pants. He's yeah, just like... He, <laughs> he like Deadpooled that thing. Doesn't Deadpool have a thing called like the magic satchel or something like that that he just randomly pulls stuff out of? Probably. Sounds like a thing. It sounds like a thing Deadpool would have. Yeah. Uh, Prince music. Did, what did you think about Prince music in this? The only Prince song I actually know, like no, no, like no for a fact I hear it come on the radio and I'm like, oh, that's Prince. It's Purple Rain. 
Yeah, well, the only song I really remember from this is Party Man, because it's in the museum scene. <laughs> yeah, I can barely remember. I barely remember anything about these movies. For some reason, I remember Batman Returns more, but I think it's because I was more traumatized by it. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that after. But uh, the boardroom scene, we're just going all over the place. Because <laughs> okay, I... let's start at the beginning. Why don't you tell me, what was the very first scene in the gosh dang movie? Okay, i um, pretty sure the very first scene was... The rooftop scene with the thugs and Batman drops down and grabs the dude by his, the, the collar of his shirt. He's not wearing a shirt. He's wearing, like, a jacket. Mm-hmm. But he grabs him, and the dude's like, what are you? And he's like, I'm Batman. Best, like, great intro. Do you think out of all the Batman movies that you've seen, do you think that's the best opening? Or do you think The Dark Knight beats it? Um, i got to think of all the openings now. What is that? How did Batman Begin start? Batman Begins started, didn't, wasn't it a flashback? Oh, yeah, it was, was in, it's the prison scene. Yeah, yeah. That was getting, fucking amazing. That was pretty kid. good. I know, uh, yeah. I thought it was for some reason when he was a kid and he fell down the well. No, I think, I think that's just a flashback. Yeah, movie. the prison scene when he's getting his ass whipped and then he stands up and, like, punches a guy once. I don't know. I think, I would argue that this is just more iconic because that's just an iconic line, but I, I prefer the Dark Knight scene overall. Okay just be wrong <laughs> to be fair i didn't even remember this so I guess, <laughs> yeah you had to explain this to me yes. you're like yeah so do you remember what happened at the very beginning of the movie i was like yeah of course i do and then i said something completely wrong I'm like no on the rooftop <laughs> oh yeah when he was like beating up the guys at ace chemical factory no not that that's when joker co- oh apparently i don't remember this yeah though. speaking of ace chemicals Let's just talk about how worthless GCPD is in these movies. Yeah. They don't do anything. It's like they know Batman's a thing, and they're just like, Oh, there's a robber! Yeah, like, do you guys see a Batmobile? They make Commissioner Gordon worthless in all these movies. What? It, oh, it was Harvey Dent. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I was thinking. What? Just... Oh, uh, Billy D. Williams? Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh, wasn't Billy D. Williams Harvey Dent in this movie? But no, he was. Yeah, yeah he, he, he was. Dent in this Who movie? was Commissioner Gordon? I don't know the actor's name at all. Didn't they but... change in Batman Returns? No, he's one. Him and Alfred are like the only people that he's, stay consistent he's the throughout the fat whole. That guy, isn't he, with the yeah. mustache? Yeah. yeah, I remember him. But he's now. like such a. He's more so a buffoon in like Forever and Batman and Robin, but he's amazing in Batman didn't and Robin, he, like everything. Didn't he bid on Poison Ivy in Batman yes, and Robin? Yes, yeah. because he was under the <laughs> pheromones. Yeah. But. He's, he's less of a buffoon here, but he's still a buffoon. Like, he's, he doesn't add anything. That's like that's one of the great things about the Dark Knight trilogy. They finally made Gordon what he should be. Dude, J.K. Simmons though is Commissioner Gordon. I feel like that would have been something, right? Yeah, there. I wish we would have saw more of that. Yeah, but yeah, but we're talking about Batman eighty nine. Yeah, we got to stop going so <laughs> off topic. This is your fault. Yeah, um, yeah. Ace Chemical scene anyway. Uh, Joker becomes Joker because he wasn't Joker before he became Joker. He was Jack Napier before he became Joker. Yeah, you know, that's definitively how the jo- who the Joker's secret identity is. Dude, they use that name in Batman the Animated Series. They, like, call him Jack Napier in one episode, and I freaking hated that. They only call him that in that episode, so... Like, Did it, like, at the end, where they just, like, he's not actually Jack Napier? No, it's just, like... It's a, it's the a episode where he's locked in Arkham Asylum and Batman is because he's under the influence of fear toxin, so they're like, oh my god, Batman's gone crazy! So he's just in a straight jacket, like, half the episode. And he's like... He uh, calls him, he's talking about his main villain, he's like Harvey Dent, Pamela Isley, Jack Napier. Oh, okay. Or as you like to call them, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, and the Joker, or something like that. I'm like, oh, man. Which, that show was made to tie into these movies, so like it makes sense, but I hated it. I'm glad that's the only time they reference it at all. Who played Vicky Vale in this movie? Um, Kim ba- Basinger. Yeah, I liked... Uh, or Bassinger, I don't know how to pronounce it. What's, who was she in Batman Forever? Who? Oh no, Vicky Bell wasn't in Batman. <laughs> no, Nicole forever. Nicole Who? Meridian was. That was a uh, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, her name was Nicole Meridian in that movie. I don't. Chase Meridian. <laughs> Chase Meridian. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I mixed the actor and the, okay, and the I was character. So confused. I was, I was like, like, I said Nicole. Her name? Nicole. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh yeah. Something I thought of. This was a joke during our commentary for Batman Forever that I made. I was like, what if Aquaman? Because he's an Aquaman. Uh-huh. And Batman Forever are connected. And 
Nicole Kidman, or Batman is Aquaman's dad, because Nicole Kidman <laughs> is his mom. Oh my gosh. And yeah. And we, that, what if in the Snyder Cut, whenever he goes to get Aquaman, he's just like, we need you, or whatever, and he's just like, I don't know who the hell you think you are, and Ben Affleck looks at him, he's like, I'm your dad, son. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. That would be great. Just, and then Aquaman is like, "There's, there's no way you're my dad." And he's like, "Yeah, we have the same workout. We both hit sledgehammers on tires." And he's just like, "What?" Dude, that was one of the best scenes in the theatrical version of Batman v Superman. I don't even care that workout montage. It was Dude, amazing. that workout montage was like, yeah, it probably was the best thing about that movie. Uh, the warehouse scene. I don't even care. <laughs> warehouse scene was nothing that was badass that's still the best batman action scene ever until the batman because we know that's gonna do something amazing uh something that i liked about batman 89 or i didn't like about batman 89 was how like just stiff he was in the suit (laughs) because it's just a giant rubber blob i mean that's how it was all the way up until the dark knight he was just like could not move his neck or anything yeah yeah Yeah, i like the I don't know what you prefer, but I like the Batman Return suit more. Like, really, the only difference is that it's more armored looking mm-hmm. than, like, the muscle look. Yeah. I like the armored look. There's a cat in front of me. Oh, my gosh. Hey, what we're about to be thinking? talking about Catwoman in a few minutes. Yeah, so, this, uh, this works. I'm a crazy uh, cat. What, el- what else happens in Batman 89? Do you? Oh, do you remember the scene where... Um, Batman's like, how much do you weigh? So I'm going to make He's like, 108. And then he grapples yeah. it up and he's like, you weigh a little more than 108. Yeah, he <laughs> called that bitch fat. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's not calling her fat, though. Like, 108 is like nothing. Yeah, I know. Which I don't know how like, tall she is or anything. Uh, but First off, just by looking at her, like, she wasn't big by any means. No. Like, but just looking at her, you're like an average adult woman in the 90s or 80s would not weigh 108 pounds. Unless you're super short, you shouldn't weigh that little. Yeah, like what the hell? Like a standard height, like I assume you'd weigh at least like 120. I think a standard aver- or think the average height for women might be like 5'6 five, or 5'4. Five, yeah, I think it's like 5'4. Like yeah. So, or not 5'6, five, I meant 5'5. Five, five. Uh, yeah. 5'4", let's say. Mm-hmm. At 5'4", if you were, like, 108 pounds, you'd be considered, like, anorexic. Even then, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, it's like... It, so... Yeah, that's very little weight. Why, yeah, well, first off, why are you lying to Batman? You probably just watched that man kill, like, 60 people. You don't know what could trigger his just murderous instincts. Oh, that reminds me... I don't know why this reminds me of that, but uh, the scene where Batman is hanging upside down, everyone made fun of that, because it's like, oh, he's a bat, he's sleeping upside down. He wasn't sleeping. He was working out. What? I don't even. Remember you don't remember this. the. Uh, you don't remember when he's hanging upside down like a uh, Vicky Bell, like he sleeps with Vicky, and then she like wakes up and just sees him hanging upside down. No, yes. are you serious? Ser- this is yes. a thing. You're was, not making this up. No, he was working out though. It's not. He was literally sleeping like a bat. That'd be funny if he just, if Tim yeah, Burton was just like... Well, that's yeah. how a lot of people took it, because, like, even though he was near workout equipment, they're like, oh, he's sleeping like a bat, this is ridiculous, but no, he's working out. By the way, I, I don't know, well, I think, I think it'll get beat in the Batman, but the man who plays Alfred, I don't know his name. Michael Gal, or is it, I don't, I don't know if it's Michael Gal or Ma- Michael Goff, I don't know how they pronounce it, I think it's Gal, I'm not sure though. Doesn't matter. Probably the best Alfred. That poor man needs a raise. Oh my god! I love his Alfred. I mean, I like Michael Caine a lot too, but they're pretty close for me. I don't know. Honestly. Michael Caine was fine, but like, what I know, Alfred's like a secret badass and whatever. But when I picture, not him, always. For the most part, though, he, like he's usually ex-military, but he's not yeah. necessarily like he served like front lines or whatever. He can like, well, more. I don't know. Any every time people talk about Alfred now, they're just like, "Ooh, he's like a secret agent. He yeah, could, yeah. he could be Batman." That's something new they newer they did in the comics. I think like he more physical. Yeah. Which Michael Caine though, I could see him like beating somebody. To death. <laughs> yeah, I could too. <laughs> but this guy, he's just he's literally just he's a servant. He's just a butler. He just oh Jesus, <laughs> what? <laughs> just call him a servant? <laughs> well, I didn't mean like in a bad way. I mean he's like he was he was. He was hired to, like, basically serve and protect Bruce. Yeah. And that's just what he does. If he would use his words over his fists, because that frail old man, if he got pushed down, he'd probably die instantly. He did let Vicky into the Batcave, though, so that was a... 
should, yeah, he also he like should have done that after. Game. Or bat game. Yeah, bat cave. Yeah, this Alfred is terrible at not letting people into the bat cave. <laughs> yeah, he's probably just so over it. He's just like, <sighs> I see him looking at me. He has laundry or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> that laundry but... scene was Yeah, amazing. that was so dumb. Oh yes. my god. That was so, so dumb. Okay, uh, do you remember the, well, we already talked about this and you don't really remember it, but Bell, Bell Tower scene where Batman's just like killing everyone. No, he like throws this. the one dude off the bell tower. It's like he's in the bell tower, but he throws him to the bottom. <laughs> that dude's dead. Yes, very then much. Then Joker's trying to escape. Helicopter, Batman grapples him, ties him to the gargoyle. <laughs> and then the gargoyle gives away, and Joker just falls to his death. Good, good, good. All right. You don't you don't remember like the ending shot? It zooms in on Joker's face, and it's like got the chattering teeth because he had that in his pocket. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I didn't remember. I didn't remember him being dead though, dude. It's been so long since he's seen it. But yeah, I, I do remember. I always remember liking the movie. Here's a question: What do you think is the coolest looking Batmobile? The Batman eighty nine. Duh, uh, dude, that easily. thing is so dude, awesome. it's fucking amazing. Oh my gosh, easily the best Batmobile. Oh, I remember like when I when I remember watching it like more recently. Every time I would see a scene with the Batmobile, I'm just like, can we get more? Like, can we yeah. just have a straight, like, just chase scene with the Batmobile? Because, like, a good maybe five minutes of it? Because it was so cool. Which I know, I remember seeing something that's like, that thing was impossible to drive. And it was impossible to turn. It was just impossible overall to use. And, uh, so it wouldn't, I guess, be practical. But didn't it, didn't he, like, shrink it to go through a corridor in this movie? Or was that in the next one? I don't remember. I know that I remember the Batmobile in this movie had a, a grappling hook on it. Yeah, I was about to say, I know when he turned the corner, he freaking had to grapple to like stay on the road. Yeah, and then he had the one that he climbed up the building with. Or that might have been in Batman Returns. I know he climbs up a building in Batman Forever. That was ridiculous. Maybe that's He what drives I'm up the of. side of the building. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> he was getting chased by two faces. Yes. Yeah, goons. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. By the way, Batmobile in that one doesn't look bad. It's not as good as 89, though. Oh, what about the Joker reveal scene? Do you remember this at all? It's like it kind of had a horror top vibe, but it, it wasn't really scary. Just a creepy Tim Burton vibe. The right. they ended his face. No, I don't think he had anything on his face. He was just in a chair, like turned around, and the pan- the camera was facing the back of the chair in the back of him. And then, like when he turned around, the dude handed him a mirror. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember this. Yeah, he was watching. He shot the TV or something, wasn't he? Didn't he? He was I sitting in like something. a chair or something like that. Yeah. And he shot a TV because they were yeah. talking about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're talking about. I think they were talking about the the robbery on Ace Chemical Factory or whatever it was. Yeah, and that, the TV thing reminds me of something else. The whole like Joker's whole master plan was to poison Gotham, and he was like putting Joker gas into like shampoo and makeup, like everyday items. Dude, that is like the best plan. Yeah, honestly, that is one of the smartest plans. And. Like, yeah. we were talking about the the lizard and then the Amazing yeah. Spider-Man 2 just turning people into lizards, and it's like, all right, whatever. This is, like, an actual good plan. Like, the only other plan that would be just as equally great and terrible would be, at the time, you know, everybody used the U.S. Postal Service. If he, like, laced the things where you'd lick an envelope and stick it, if he, like, laced that with some type of poison, because everybody had to mail them their bills yeah. and stuff like that. But, like... I don't remember the whole thing with Batman Begins. I don't know. It was like the fear toxin in the water supply, but to admit that they were using the whatever. Okay, I remember this I one because I, I remember watching it here recently. And Batman Begins, it was... They dumped the fear toxin in the, the water supply below Arkham. First off, why is the water supply ran below, like directly Yeah, why is below? it below a mental institution? Exactly. And why wasn't that like... I don't know, more sealed up because it was like maybe a three or four foot hole and then there was the pipe and then the open water. And it's like, what? But they dumped it all in there and then they used the thing, the vapor thing, to like smoke the city basically, turn it into one giant vape cloud and then everybody (laughs) inhaled it and then they were all like, had the fear toxin. But the problem ended up being, was going to be the the fucking, the cloud wouldn't go away. It would yeah. still be there because the water supply was still going, so it was still vaporizing everything. The Arkham games basically took this idea and did it. You played Arkham Knight, right? No, I didn't play Arkham Knight. Okay, well, in Arkham Asylum, Scarecrow was attempting to poison yes. the water supply yes. and then kill a croc. Yeah. Didn't murder him, but supposedly murdered him. Yeah. And then he comes back in Arkham Knight and does poison the city, like bursts a, a giant fear toxin cloud or something, and mm-hmm. like, it's so weird. 
Because, like, literally half the city is just, like, in... It looks like lava, but it's, like, fear goo or something. I don't know. It's... I don't know. It's crazy. It's weird. I don't know. But, yeah, they basically took that and put it in the Arkham games. I think I think Jack Napier's Joker, or Jack Nicholson's <laughs> Joker, <laughs> I think he had the best plan. Because, yeah, just putting it in everyday items. Yeah, miscellaneous stuff that you need. Yeah, and it's, like, stuff that it's, like... If you died because of it, or no, you wouldn't die. You just turned crazy like him, didn't you? I don't. I don't know how like toxic it was. I don't know if it just made you like did, la- did just laugh you maniacally, s- yeah. or if it like actually killed you. Yeah, but that's not something. I that guess it. People... It might depend on how much you intake. That that's not something that like if you went to the hospital or something over it, they wouldn't think. Let me see your shampoo bottle. Yeah, no. So he would have been like good for months the, it's only like if there was like a world's greatest detective or something like that in Gotham, yeah and that's what, that's him. the other thing like batman does a pretty decent amount of detective work in that because like he's not everyone says he doesn't do detective work not everyone but a lot of people say he doesn't do detective work in these movies because he's not like like in the dark night he's not doing stuff like looking at a bullet in a wall or whatever he's not doing like you know magnifying glass detective work but he's like on the computer all the time, like, researching this stuff. Like, oh, Joker's done this and this, and these are the items that are, like, safe, and these are the items that are venomous, you need to stay away, it's mm-hmm. toxic. I don't know. I think this movie is is great, but I can't remember a lot about it, but all I remember for the most part is Batman just not moving, because he can't, because, you know, it's just a giant yeah, yeah. rubber suit. Like, I don't know. I wish I wish they could have found a way to make him more just, like, agile or something. Because I feel like if you told Michael Keaton, all right, we're going to, like, let you, like, roundhouse kick three people, that dude probably would have been jumping for joy because he just seems like a guy who just wants to beat people up for no reason. I don't know why I get that vibe from Michael <laughs> He's Keaton. He's about to be Batman again. Oh, wow. Well. I cannot wait. Um, uh, but uh, he, I don't know. If they could have found a way to make it more mobile or something, I feel like it would have made, like, to the action a little bit better. Because mo- most of the action was just his fist up and he ducks. Yeah, yeah. And he ducks and he punch. It's just, like, weave, dodge, punch, basically. Yep. And he, he did a few kicks, but they were just, like, straight kicks. They were, he yeah. didn't do, like, roundhouses and stuff, like no. you were saying. He didn't do any of the... Oh, yeah. Also, uh, the training in Japan, they, like, covered that. Yeah. That was you, really you, cool. Yeah, you told me about that. I didn't remember that. But it's, like, you didn't... You don't see any of that. He looks like, like, a... Just a boxer type of thing from like you know from the way he fights well, yeah. it don't look like he's but and then again it's because they were limited yeah i was just saying like it's cool that they touched on that because that's a big part of batman's character before he's batman he trained everywhere basically mm-hmm. yeah, like he knows like does he know like every type of martial arts or something yeah i think i don't know if it's like every type or it's like a ridiculous amount like 26 different types which i don't know how many different types there are <laughs> he basically knows everything definitively he's, he's a master on, martial artist there are two types of martial arts there are jujitsu and karate <laughs> jujitsu and karate that's the only yeah. way to say it. karate 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 and jujitsu that's it every other type is fake or it's just built off of those so take that if you like yeah. martial arts yeah i don't really remember Knox much in this you you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But he was Knox. the dude with Vicky when they were talking about the Japan stuff. I don't know. I don't His name's that. Knox. And I don't... This is a line I always remember from the movie for some reason. Six. Six is good. <laughs> That's what? a line in the movie that Knox says. What is that? What is that? I don't know what they were talking about, but... You just remember him saying six. Six is good. Yeah. I've heard it, like, on podcasts and stuff, too. It's not just from the movie. Oh. I don't know. I hear that referenced a lot. And also back to the Joker thing real quick, uh, after the kind of makeup and shampoo thing goes up and he's not able to poison the city that way, he literally gets everyone out. Like he does an announcement. He's like, are you going to trust me or the dude that doesn't show his face? Like calling Batman out. And he's like, I'll give you a bunch of money. And his whole plan is to like make money rain down on him and then poison the entire Mm -hmm. city. That's a genius idea because people are so greedy. They're going to want money no matter what. I feel like if they do the Joker again... And another Batman. They need to take something. They need to take, like... I don't know. I don't want people to do a Mark Hamill impression, but, like, when I think of the Joker, that's the voice I think of. So, you know, kind of like a Boston... He had a Boston-ish accent, didn't he? Or is that a thing? Yeah. I don't know. I don't 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 hear it when he's voicing Joker, at least. I don't know. 
I thought I thought that no, I'm thinking of Harley. Harley has the Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Harley and Sorkin's annoying. the best Harley. Yeah. But uh they needed to mix all the jokers. Like I feel like this Joker was a master manipulator. Obviously. He got people to not listen to a guy who tried to save them and go out into like wasn't it like he threw a parade? Yeah, it was like a parade. parade. Yeah, he got them to all go out there and they're like, We're gonna get money. <laughs> He, he's obviously and he a, does actually give money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but he's like, ah, I'm gonna poison all you. Yeah, now you're you can't spend it, you dummies. You're all gonna die. <laughs> there's, there's like four or five people that just grab like twenty bucks and then bolt it. They're like, Yeah, we're out. We don't know what's going on, but we don't trust it. <laughs> but uh, wasn't like the cops and stuff out there too in the street? I I think. swear I remember just cops out there. You know this this Joker guy is isn't that bad. Oh, there was also another scene, and I don't. I don't. I would have to rewatch the movie to like understand what the scene's about again. But there's like this scene, and this might actually be the beginning before Batman drops down. I don't know if it's after or before. I don't know if it's the opening scene or not. But there's this scene of a kid walking with his parents like down an alleyway, and you're meant to think it's Bruce, I guess, but it's not Bruce. It's like in present day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he stops the shooting, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that was before because that's what he mm-hmm. stopped or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. stops that guy, he chases yeah. him on the roof. Yeah. That was really cool, I thought. I remember that. Yeah, no, that, I don't know. That's it, I don't know, it's just cool when they do parallel stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, but that kid's probably thinking, God damn it, I wanted that <laughs> fucking use my trauma to be a fucking hero. I want yeah. to be Owl Man. Ooh, Owl Man. Court of Owls, Owl Man. Oh, I think, I think of the crime syndicate, Owl Man, when you say that. Like oh, from I think Crisis on Two Earths. I think of Alman from Watchmen. Oh, uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's basically everything about Batman '89. What do you think of Michael Keaton as Batman? He's great. What do you think of Still the Jack best. Nicholson as uh, Joker? He's good. Not like I think Keaton is my second favorite Batman overall. As I know, like voices and everything. Yeah. And Nicholson's probably still like third or no fourth because I like like Hamill Ledger. And Phoenix more. Oh yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is. Dude, Joaquin was so good. Oh man, I got I got to thank for Joaquin Phoenix right now. I don't know why, but uh, what do you what did you think of Vicky Vale? She was uh, all right. You didn't find her annoying or anything? Not not that I can remember. Not that I can recall. Like I, I feel like in all movies, like the I don't know what what would you call not not just the women, but like the people. That's with the, your main protagonist, just like your tag alongs, I guess. Yeah, kind of always so kind of obnoxious. The, kind of the damsel in distress, like the, or it can be a guy, like yeah. Uh, it's just it's like yeah, Wonder Woman. Tag- Steve Trevor's kind of <laughs> yeah. He's annoying, but he does something cool at the end. So. Yeah, I was about to say he does. Spoiler alert like for Trevor. Wonder Woman. I just like Chris Pine though. I don't know if you know this or not, but in the deleted scene of Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor actually didn't blow up the plane. He parachuted out. Is it, is it real? <laughs> yes, it's totally real. Yeah. He landed. I feel like it's not. <laughs> it's not real at all. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. I was trying to think of somewhere where he landed. I was like, and he landed. And he killed baby Hitler. Oh. But then I remembered Hitler was alive during World War One. Yeah. So. Well, he, he, he would have like, been a kid. Okay, so here's the thing I heard at work. I don't know why. Um, who's the guy who died that started World War One? I don't know. Okay. Well, whoever died, he's the reason that hentai, I know what you're talking about, though. hentai porn exists. What? Okay. I don't know why. This some one of my random coworkers just decided that I needed. He needed to tell me this. I want you to keep in mind. I've had maybe four or five conversations with this guy. Okay. He has no idea what I like, <laughs> and he just randomly starts telling me why hentai, how hentai porn was made. It might be wrong. I don't care, but it's interesting. When Ar- I think it was Archduke Ferdinand. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, when he died, uh, that caused World War One to start. Well, World War One also led into World War Two because yeah. you know Hitler was like, ah, oh, blah blah blah, bad Jews. stuff. Yeah, Jews are bad, but they're not. No. Pretty cool. And uh, Michael that- Rosenbaum is Jewish. Is he? Yeah. Oh, man. Michael Rosenbaum's amazing. He is amazing. One of my favorite actors. I had a dream last night. That- no, about Michael Rosenbaum? Not, no, nothing. It's about Jewish people. I don't oh. know why. <laughs> it's like somebody I like know is Jewish, but they're not actually Jewish. I know for a fact, but I don't know. It's just weird. Okay. Anyways, um, he 
it caused American troops to get ended up ended up getting sent to Japan during the time where porn was illegal in Japan, and they brought comic books. Okay. And apparently the Japanese people like fantasized over like people in the comic books, and they ended up making hentai porn. So that might not be true. If somebody would love to fact check that and put that in your comments on how hentai porn was actually made. I'm sure you would love to know the interesting story behind it. Hey, uh, leave a comment about anything because it helps. Hentai porn. No, yeah, sure, I don't care. What's your opinion on hentai porn? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? <laughs> okay, so do, do you want to like give that man 89 a grade or something? I know we did this for Jurassic Park. Yeah, but let's change it. Let's not do 10 out of 10 or anything. Let's do, would you watch it again? Yeah, I would watch yeah, it. Yeah, I would watch it again. <laughs> Let's just do them different every time. Okay. Have no consistency. Yeah, I would watch it again. I would totally watch that movie again. Okay, so uh, Batman Returns. You remember this one better? I do remember this one better. Do you like Catwoman or Penguin more in this movie? Pe- I like Penguin more now, but then oh, really? I like... Yeah, because he's terrifying. Yeah, but I, Michelle Feiner's Catwoman is... She's my favorite villain from like these movies. Like I like her more than Nicholson Joker. Mm. That, and that might just be because... I like how she looks, but I don't know. I there's nothing wrong with Catwoman, but like when no, I, think, I, think, I just think Michelle Pfeiffer's performance is amazing. I I'm not gonna say you're wrong or anything, but I just I don't know. Danny DeVito's great too, though. Yeah, it's just he's so terrifying, and that's what I imagine the Penguin is. And he's tragic. Used to be. Yeah, like you remember? How, I remember how this movie opens. He gets put. Yeah, in he, a, uh, Pee Wee Herman and his wife, whoever his wife is in this movie. I don't remember. It's Paul Rubens. Do you remember that? His dad. Uh-uh. Paul Rubens plays Pee Pee Wee Herman. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. Which is exactly he, he's Penguin's about. dad in that scene. I did not remember that. And then he returned. He actually comes back in Gotham to play Penguin's dad again. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Penguin is the best part of Gotham. Like, Gotham Penguin and this Penguin are probably two of my favorites. Probably my two favorite Penguins. But yeah, I just like... Yeah, the scene opens. And he's like in a cage just mm-hmm. because, I guess, how deformed he is. Mm-hmm. And who's to say he would act like that, like clawing and stuff, if they didn't lock him in a cage? Like, he could have just been deformed and normal. Yeah, it's like, uh, it reminded me kind of like Quasimodo from The hunt, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the best Disney movies I'm, that has ever dude, been Dude, I've made. only seen like four Disney movies. I've seen Lion King, Beauty and the Beast. I swear to God, if you say Frozen, I'm going to punch you. Oh, I've seen Frozen once, but I, oh, no, I had to stay, no, look, I didn't really watch it, but I had to stay up with my nephew before, and he was obsessed with that freaking movie. Dang I was God. just on my phone the entire time. Frozen's good as fuck, I ain't gonna say anything I, about it, it's pretty good. I mean, I I don't, I couldn't tell you anything that happens really. I, I like, I only know, uh, what's the main character's name? I thought I knew I him. only know <laughs> what's the main character's name? Um. Ellis. Elsa. I mean, I was gonna. I was hoping you would just go with Ellis. Okay. Be like, yeah, Ellis. Elsa. There we go. Um, I know her, and uh, I know <laughs> Olaf. Is that the stuff? Yes, that was, was that was Josh Gad. Okay, I know him. That's pretty much it. Kristoff. That's the that's the dude, right? Or is that the reindeer? That's the know. dude. Which one is Spin it? Spin is the reindeer. Yes. Oh, I don't know her. Anna is that her? Name? Yes. Okay, there we go. I only know this because I talked to my stepbrother about that a month ago and he knew it somehow. I was like, I didn't remember any of this. I just knew Elsa. Okay, anyway. What were we talking about? Batman Returns? I don't remember. I, I, I compared him to the Hunchback of Notre Dame, yeah, but, but I don't know where I was going I with need that to watch anymore. that movie one day. Definitely. It's it's really good. But he, uh, I like it when they when they give a villain like kind of a a traumatic story yeah. and kind of makes them a little more sympathetic yeah. and you could see why they're doing the things that they do even though you're like that's clearly wrong that's why uh like batman the ME series like mr freeze was a joke before that show and they like gave him such a sympathetic backstory that he's one of the best batman villains now yeah i i don't know like he a just... story like a backstory for a character it goes a long way also, it's very impressive how the penguins survived, because he, like, grew up in the sewers and whatnot, did he not? Yeah, because they sent him down the freaking river. Yeah, yeah, like, he what, grew he, up. He killed a cat, right? 
He yeah. killed their cat, and yeah. then they're like, sent him down the river. Yeah. And right. he grew up in the sewers. Or, you know, he was like three years old. Maybe you just teach your three-year-old, don't kill cats. I don't know what was up with uh, when he's like revealed in present day. Like, when he just rises up from the sewers, I'm like, what? Is this like second coming of the Messiah? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> what is happening? <laughs> that's just, I don't know, that's Tim Burton. Though. Yeah, I know, it's so weird. <laughs> times. Like, it's just things that don't necessarily make sense to us. He probably looks at it and he's like, that's genius. That's genius. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think Penguin might have been my favorite villain in this movie. And dude, he was so what. This is the reason Penguin terrified me. Is because when he sits there and he's laughing, and he's ah, yeah. and then he just bites that dude's nose oh, yeah. off and then continues laughing. And he's just eating raw fish. Yeah, the entire time. And I'm like, what? In the world? <laughs> this is, that's not sushi, buddy. Yeah, that's that's just, and it's not even sushi. He's like eating the skin and everything. He's that's like just gross. biting the heads off of him. <laughs> <laughs> Cast me to play penguin. Here, wait, here's my penguin laugh. Ah, 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 ah. That sounded like Jared Leto's Joker laugh. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, I think I have a theory for why Batman killed so much in this. Because, like, Penguin's whole game was bas- gang was basically, like, clowns, right? A lot of it. Yeah. And Batman just hates clowns after Joker. He okay. hates them with a badge, and so he's like, I'm going to murder every single clown I see. So basically you're saying if the kids from Derry would have called up Batman, he would have took out Pennywise yes. like that? Oh my, dude, I want to see that so bad. Batman versus Pennywise. But just like, that you want him to make It Chapter 3, but yes. like in an alternate reality <laughs> yes. where it's like, Georgie's like, he's he's... Huh? Oh, <laughs> Pennywise, let me shove my arm down there. Oh, and then what? it's just Michael Keaton's Batman just drops in on top of him, starts pounding the shit out of him. He's like, fuck you, Jack. You son of a bitch. You <laughs> killed my goddamn parents. <laughs> what if it's like an alternate version and Batman is growing up in Derry and he's growing up an orphan? Like, it's after he lost his oh, parents like and then this. he sees Pennywise in the sewers and just like doesn't really fuck with him. 27 years later, he's like trained. He's Batman. Pennywise comes back. Oh, that's that's actually pretty fucking cool. That would be amazing. That's something I fuck with right there. Yes. Think about it, though. Like, what if there was no Joker? Let's say that Pennywise was his Joker. But let's say all his other villains are the same, but Pennywise was just his Joker. <laughs> I don't think Pennywise would stand a chance against Batman. I don't know. He can, like, he could, the thing, I don't Dude, know. Dude, I'm more scared of the Joker than I am Pennywise. Well, the thing about Pennywise is, is he, he breaks your mind. But could you break? Yeah, Batman's but you have to be mind? you have to be scared of him for it to do that. That is true. You do have like what? What are you gonna do to Batman? Show him bats? He's already like <laughs> embraced that. He's like <laughs> bats. Just show him his parents. So <laughs> <laughs> mommy, mommy, just say Martha. Yeah, there you go. And then Superman shows up and just snaps Pennywise's <laughs> neck, and then he pulls his head off. And he's like, Aah! he starts crying. He's on his knees crying, and it's just Keaton's Batman looking at Cavill's Superman, and he's like the fuck dude what is wrong with you and then ben affleck rolls up and he's like somebody say martha the fuck guys what's <laughs> going on imagine like a justice league versus pennywise movie where pennywise like teams up with the scarecrow or something and it's just dude. fear everywhere yeah what if they got injected by the fear toxin and it, they would literally kill themselves if pennywise if they got injected by fear toxin and pennywise just shows up that would be amazing because you know you know he can embody whatever he yeah. can do whatever he wants yeah like his, Apparently you can bully him to death, though. Yeah, just, you it, fat sack of shit! It, too, sends such a terrible message to kids. <laughs> yeah, bully, I don't know why kids would be watching that. Bully but. the people you're scared of. But also, like, if you don't like gay people, <laughs> kill them, because that's what Pennywise did. Dude, that was did. so awful. Oh my god, I'm like, this is 2019, why is this happening? Yeah, it was 20, but then again, Derry is such an ass-backwards town that... Yeah, and there's still so many people like that, it's, it's stupid. Yeah, but, you know... I, that's I do what movies tell me to do. So anytime I see gay people now, I beat the shit. Just kidding. I feed them God. to the alligator. Oh my! To be God. fair though, I feed everybody to my alligator. Yeah, he fed my leg to his alligator. Yeah, he has a peg leg. Okay, back to the penguin. Oh yeah. Speaking of alligators, he didn't have alligators, but no, he, he had penguins. He did have penguins. He had at least three. Do you want to? Do you want to try to do this chronologically or skip to the end? Uh, let's try to do it. Chronologically. Okay, so. What happens after Ping Warner? Oh, do you remember? I don't know why I remember this scene. The Duckmobile. Dude, yes, that was great. This, this is pretty fun. They, that shows back up in Batman the Anime Series, and I love it. I, really? I love the duck. Yeah. <laughs> fucking duck. It's so cool. awesome. Why is it not a penguin? I don't know. He's just, he, well, it's like Ping always has stuff to do with like all kinds of birds. Like, 
he, he Karen vultures around at the time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like yeah, uh, he's just like he just likes birds. I guess he just gets the name penguin. Sometimes it's because he's literally deformed. Like he has penguin like hands, mm-hmm. like in this. And sometimes it's just because he like has a limp or something and like walks like a penguin, so he gets called penguin. Uh, it's whatever. That's how it was in Gotham. I think that's how it's gonna be in the Batman or something. Like he. I think I heard that in the Batman, he hates being called Penguin because, like, he's at the beginning of his career, so he, but he's gonna make a bunch of people's bitch or something and be like, yeah, I'm the Penguin, motherfucker. That's cool. I don't care what they do, as long as they make something good out of it. I don't care how they change stuff, as long as they don't change it for the worse. Yeah. But, Batman Returns, something I find interesting about these movies, Michael Keaton's actually said this before, I'm pretty sure, but I think, I noticed a lot more in this one than I do in Batman 89 for some reason, but how little... His Bruce Wayne talks. What? Like, his Bruce Wayne doesn't, like, talk a lot. Like, you know, he's... N- or he's not in the public eye. Oh, yeah. Eye. Yeah, he's, he's silent for the most part. Yeah, yeah, because... I don't know why I always remember this scene. It's just this, like, quiet scene of him, like... I don't know, he's reading a book or watching, like, some 90s sitcom. Mm-hmm. And the bat signal, like, shows up and he just slowly turns his head... And looks up, like stands up and then looks up, like mm-hmm. he's generating suit up. Why are the bat suits on hangers? <laughs> that is a good question. But then again, he's also. He's a billionaire. But then again, the same could be said. Why would it be on a mannequin? Because then he has to take it off of the mannequin. At least on a hanger, he's just got to, like, slip it out. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. I, I just think of stuff like. I don't know if you've really seen Batman Beyond, but, like, how he has the cases for the suits, like, the. Dude, I want to see a Batman movie that, like, has... Oh, my God. What if they did this in the new Batman, where it's, like, he retires, let's say, the suit he's wearing at the end of the movie, and they give him a new suit, like, a more kind of, like, modernish Batman suit, and he just puts that one in, like, a glass case. Yeah. Like like they did with the Joker, Jason Todd, in, mm. in the... You mean... S- Snyder Cut. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh... I want to see stuff like that, because, oh, my God. Yeah, I remember in Batman the Animated Series, there's the wall... Of all the bad suits, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. I want to see people wearing all that. I want to see everybody wearing, like, everybody come get a suit right now and suit up. Yeah, I know in Batman Beyond, like, he doesn't wear the whole suit, but he wears the Nightwing mask in one episode because, like, his suit's fucked up, the Batman Beyond suit is. Because it's, like, a villain that can take over the suit or something, since, like, the whole suit's technical. He gets it taken over. I don't know. Yeah, but, um... What were we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about Batman Returns. Just how... Yeah, I thought I was going to say something else, but I guess... Oh! Hangers. Like, in, in movies, like, in the new movies, I hope they do this sometime, but, like, you know how Batman slowly, like, collects memorabilia, I guess, from his villains? Like, he has the giant Joker card, the giant penny, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I want to see something like that just... I want to see it build. Like, he doesn't already have it, but, it like, he progressively gets it. Okay, so, this... <laughs> this is kind of weird. But when I was watching the show Hannibal, they said that Hannibal Lecter, because he was a psychiatrist, he said normally most psychopaths take trophies from people that they encounter. (laughs) Yeah. So... Batman's a psychopath? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. Which, I guess you have to be kind of... I was going to say, I don't know if a psychopath, but he's definitely damaged, obviously. Yeah. Do you think... That Batman could be, like, fixed, like, as a person? Like, do you think, as as messed up as he is in the head, do you think, like, a psychiatrist could go in there and, like, fix him? I don't think he'd really want to be fixed, because that could take away from his mission. Oh. And what is his mission? To let homeless children, <laughs> to orphan re- children? Redeem his parents, basically. No, he just wants more kids to be orphans. Yeah, think about it. If kids weren't orphanized, he would never have Dick Grayson. He just—that's true. But I mean, he doesn't—he <laughs> doesn't want anything that what happened to him to happen to anyone else. Even though all the Robins experience that pretty much. Yeah, and then Barbara, like, yeah, Barbara her. has a dad, but she's like, hey, Batman, what's up? What's up, honey? I'm like sixteen. Like, I'm like thirty. What's with oh. the females having dad? Like Batwoman has a dad. Why, why do why do the Robins not have dads? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're like we need Batman to be a, their far father figure. I don't know. They always say I don't remember. I okay, okay. Let's get back to Batman <laughs> yeah. Returns. Jesus. Okay. okay. So um, he rises up from the sewers. Yes. He's back in the public eye. What's going on with Catwoman? What, what's what's she up? Well, to? she's just uh, what is she? A secretary? She's a, she oh, was Max Shrek. By Christopher, played yeah, by Christopher yeah. Walken. Amazing. I freaking yes. love that trick so much. Yeah. Like, he's I think, ass. honest, huh? Isn't he, like, a big asshole? Yeah, and he's, like, 
Is he? No, he's helping Penguin run for mayor. Yeah. Yeah, but he's like he's using Penguin like he. He's trying to manipulate. Him. Yeah, he's mani- he's manipulative. He's manipulating everyone basically. But I think he's doing all this for his son. To like, I don't know, to help his son well, do something. I don't even know. D- that's the the thing right there. It's you know he's doing it. It's it's a tragic kind of not necessarily tragic, but he has he thinks he has good motive. See, that's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. What's Two Face's intentions in Batman Forever? He's just crazy. Yeah. Too- <sighs> What's Riddler's intentions in? He's just Jim Carrey. He got fired from a job. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. But, like, these movies, they give people intentions. And then, so, you know, he walks, all right, I'm Catwoman. Hey, Max, what's going on? I'm Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah okay. What are you doing? <laughs> I guess we can talk about Catwoman real quick, because I don't remember how much more it has to do with Penguin before, like, Catwoman at least gets shoved out the window. Because, uh, so she's secretary for Max Shrek, and, oh, there's this cool scene. I think I've showed you this before, but I don't remember, or I don't know if you've noticed it. But there's a shot, and, like, the shadow of her glasses is, like, reflecting back onto her. Like, it's the classic Catwoman mask. So it's, like, foreshadowing that she's about to become Catwoman. Oh, shit, you have showed me that before. It's so cool. Yeah, you have showed me that. That is something fucking clever and awesome that Tim Burton did, too. Yeah. See, they, they need to do more stuff like that. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's, I guess it's hard to try to think of that in yeah, the moment. It's just cool, though. It we're... is cool. So, yeah, she gets shoved out the window, and then... She gets bit by a radioactive cat. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't understand how she becomes a cat woman. Like, well, she was already a cat person, but... Yeah, I know that. Cause... Apparently, cats are just attracted to her, so after... I don't know, she gets fucked up, she doesn't die somehow... And then, like, all the cats start licking her, and everyone, I don't know, a lot of people take that, that the cats bring her back to life, but I don't know. I mean, she fell, she fell into, like, a truck, right? Like, a hay truck or some shit? Like, she didn't I fall straight so. to the ground, so. No, she, I thought she fell in a huge thing of snow. No, no, no. She falls through, like, she hits a lot on the she, way down, so she should. She John Wicked that fall. Literally, like, the, bang, 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 yeah. bang. So, literally, the only way she could even manage to live that realistically is if she never hit her head, which that's very unlikely, yeah. if you're hitting that many things. <laughs> no. Even then, she'd have internal bleeding. Yeah. And, and there'd be no way she'd get she up. And there'd totally be no would have collapsed bleeding. along, so. Oh, I don't know how I haven't mentioned this yet, but this is a Christmas movie. One of the yeah. best Christmas movies ever. Yeah, you put this one up there next to Die Hard and best Christmas movies of all time. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> I knew that before I even said that. I was like, I know he's never seen Die Hard, but I'll say it anyways. Because maybe, just maybe, he's watched it. I me too. I'll watch it around Christmas. <sighs> yeah, no, you won't. You'll watch Batman Returns. And Home Alone. And Home Alone. <laughs> God. Okay, so, yeah, she she goes back to her place, and she's got, like, a call from her mom. I don't know why I remember that, but... Mm-hmm. She, I don't know. And then a bunch of cats, like, show up at her window. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm a cat person. <laughs> And then she makes the Catwoman costume. I so, don't. I don't like the cat costume that much, but uh, it's the best one that we've seen in live action. Oh so yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I really like it. But something else cool about this is, as the movie goes on, like her costume becomes more unstitched. Like her costume starts to come. Really? Be, yeah, because her psyche is becoming more unstitched as well. So it's like oh. showcasing that. It's really like all the stuff with Catwoman is dope in this movie. Yo, that's awesome! I didn't know that. Yeah, I notice it's like it, it. You can see it. It like yeah. It comes more. I guess white. I guess like, because of the stitchings coming undone. Yeah, like or the the threads coming loose and like and by the end, like half her mask is off and stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah. her hair goes crazy. Yeah. Okay, so. I guess that's really all about Catwoman until we get to the end, so we can go back to Penguin. Okay. Well, there, there's some stuff between Batman and Catwoman, but Batman and Penguin as well. Sex stuff. So, yeah, like you were talking about the the mayor campaign scene, I guess, like at the party mm-hmm. when he bites the dude's nose off and he's just eating raw fish like a weirdo. First so, off, who the fuck would... What First off, what party is he running for? Because I don't know anybody on either any side, any side in the world that would look at him and be like, he's fit to be mayor. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, I, I could see that now, but in 1992, definitely not. Because like the world's a lot more open to like 
I would, accepting people now. I would vote for him just as a meme. Like, be like, yeah, he that, is that's crazy. the thing with the internet. A lot of people are uh-huh. He People would elect him president right now, like, in a situation where... Yeah, why not? Be like, he eats raw fish heads. Dude, <laughs> think about it. We can get him in a press conference and meme him. It's like, he just bit a guy's nose off. We well, don't maybe care. he should just keep his nose out of other people's business. God. Oh, yeah, you gotta remember this line, though. One of the most iconic lines in a Batman movie ever. When he's talking to Penguin about becoming a mayor, and he's like, unlimited poutine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember that, but... It's amazing. So, yeah, Penguin's, like, really horny in this movie. <laughs> it's yeah. weird. Doesn't he, I guess, really end up with a woman, and he's, like, laying in bed or something with her, and then he, yeah. like, he rolls out of bed, and he's like... Rah! Yeah, something like that, and then he's heading on Catwoman. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. oh, I think this was before that, actually, but uh, Batman's watching this on TV, and it's like Penguin at his parents' graveside, I think. And mm-hmm. he's just given this, like, I don't know, he's given this, like, heartfelt speech or something. Like, eh, you know, they. I was their number one son, but they treated me like number two. There's You were their only son, dipshit. Yeah, that, exactly. Oh! <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was so confused. Do you not get that joke? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Now. That went over a lot of people's heads somehow. Yeah. I'm like, I got it when I was like 10 years old. And I'm like, yeah, am I a genius for knowing this? Apparently, <laughs> like, it's pretty yeah. simple. <laughs> I'm stupid. But, yeah, well, fuck your parents. They're yeah, bad so, people. There's a joke like that in a Batman movie. There's a lot of stuff in this movie that you wouldn't expect to be in a Batman movie, but that's because Tim Burton had complete control of this movie. What so do you... A Tim Burton movie. Yeah, what do you feel like... Do you feel like the look of Batman 89... Do you like the look of Batman 89 or Batman Returns more? Like the overall, just look at the city aesthetically, just overall everything. Honestly, I don't know if it's the snow or what, but I like Returns. I do too. I like Returns more because it looks kind of like how I would expect a Gotham to look. Dark, fucked up, and just kind of nasty for the most part. Because, yeah. like, if you remember, there's always, like, papers blowing in the streets and stuff. And, like, every scene, like, you see Penguin outside talking and mm-hmm. stuff. You just see a newspaper just blowing down the street. It's kind of it's kind of like New York, but, like, it's got a different feel than New York. Yeah. What do you think of Bruce Wayne in this movie? It doesn't talk much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of his Batman detecting skills in this one? I don't, I don't really remember him doing a lot of, like, detective stuff. Do you remember the, um, I don't remember what she was, but she was, like, she was part of Penguin's crew, and she was, like, I don't remember, I'm pretty sure Penguin killed her later. Yeah, she, he, like, cuts her, like, armpit or something with a battering. Who, I don't remember the lady, I don't remember. She but, cuts her armpit? Yeah, what, like, he has a battering and he, like, cuts her or something. Who cuts it's her? It's weird. Penguin. Really? Yeah, it's really weird. Oh, I, you, I feel like I remember this, but I yeah, just don't remember him cutting her armpit. I don't think it shows it, but it, like, oh, cuts okay. away. But, um, yeah, they, they're controlling the Batmobile, like, Penguin's game. Yes, yeah, they can yeah. control the Batmobile. I love the armor, the armor. Yes! Thing. That's so That was cool. dope, the yeah, shield. it was, it was very cool. Shield. <laughs> um, you know what would have been kind of funny, and then, I don't know if Tim Burton thought to do this or not, but, like, before the shield went on, have just a random kid over there, like, trying to steal a wheel off the Batmobile, and the oh, shield comes down, yeah. and then the kid runs away. That would have been, like, a good kind of nod to Jason Todd, but, you yeah, know. Yeah, but... I don't know. I guess... That I was guess, before Dick Grayson, so... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Batman all those years later. Hey, you remember that kid trying to steal the Batmobile? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna well, see if he wants to be Robin. <laughs> yeah, and then he fucking... He finally gets Dick Grayson, not at, like, eight years old, but at, yeah. like, 29. Fucking college dude. <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh, thank God. Graduated kid college. Years. Oh, Jesus. I fucking hate the kid years. Okay, so what do you think of the Batman? Do you remember much about the Batman Catwoman relationship in this? Not really. I remember it was just kind of weird. It was not, not weird, but it was just, I don't know. It didn't seem like, I don't know. I feel like the, the relationship in uh, The Dark Knight Rises was better than in this one. Because, I don't know, I just don't buy a woman like Michelle Pfeiffer looking at a man like Michael Keaton being like, mm, you're hot stuff. Oh, that reminds me of another line. One of the best lines. Like I remember this line. Uh, mistletoe is deadly if you kiss it, but even deadlier if you eat it or something like that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> that was a line. It was a line between... I think it was a line between Batman and Catwoman. And then Bruce says it to Selena later on like in the ballroom. Yeah. So like they know each other. Yeah. 
I don't. I always like that. I don't know. I like I like callbacks like that. They're like, oh shit, you're you're him. I don't like callbacks that are like so forced. It's like yeah. the beginning of the movie. He's like, that's a bad for your computer, and then it's just like at the end of the movie, he's like, hey, that's bad for your computer. <laughs> what? No. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> I like the subtle callbacks. Yeah. Like you don't. You sometimes you may not even realize it on your yeah. first watch. See, I didn't remember that at all. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, the introduction count one though. She like claws this dude's face off because he he's mugging a woman or something. Good, he yeah. deserves it. Yeah. She just straight up claws his face off. See, that's what fucked me up when I was a kid. The pink one thing fucked you up. That fucked me up for some reason. Really? Time. I don't know why. Like I can't. I don't know. I don't, I don't like blood. Well, I, I don't care for blood. It's dude, fine. he bit a dude's nose off. I'm saying it's fine now, but like. Yeah, but it wasn't as much blood. I don't know. I, I was weird. I was weird as a kid. <laughs> I can't handle any bodily function. Blood, though, I don't care about blood. Blood's perfectly fine. If you piss in front of me, I will die. But if you start bleeding, I'll be like, dude, you should probably, I don't know. It depends. I mean, it depends that. how much blood it is. So. Oh, like, I don't know. Open wounds. I can deal with a lot of blood. Like, just show me a beaten heart. Yeah. Just squirt blood out in my face. Like in movies, I, I can it. literally watch someone blow up and be fine. Yeah, I can I can drink up. Have you ever seen, uh, 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 oh my gosh, that movie with Ben Stiller. Not uh, Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Tropic, no, Tropic Thunder. <laughs> no. It has uh, Robert Downey Jr. in it. Yeah, no Robert Downey Jr. in it. Whatever. Oh, that movie's no. so funny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like satirical. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he's too. like an Australian actor or yeah, something yeah. like that. And they, they cast him to play a black guy. <laughs> oh, okay. It's so funny. But a guy blows up in that movie and it's just hilarious. It's yeah, but I think the first scene, Catwoman and Batman are and together I think it's actually the first scene Catwoman, Penguin and Batman are all there because I don't remember if this is after or before the rooftop scene between uh, Batman and Catwoman because mm-hmm. uh, Batman's like fighting Catwoman or whatever and then like Michelle Pfeiffer is on the ground or Selena's on the ground and she's like I'm a woman how could you <laughs> and he's like oh I'm, I'm sorry and then she bitch slaps <laughs> That's funny. She's like, I'm a woman. I shouldn't be taken for granted or something that's, like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like how he, in like any other Batman though, would just be like, you fucking, you did the crime, now you can take the punch. Yeah, there's a great line in, oh, it's in Batman the Brave and the Bold, which is like, uh, I don't like that Batman. Oh, dude, it's a take on like Silver Age Batman though, so it's great. Or Golden. I don't like Blue Bat, I don't like Blue Beetle. Okay, he's, he's not in every episode. Is he not? <laughs> no. I thought he was he's like in, a main He's in a few, but no. Some episodes are just Batman. Really? Yeah. I only watched like two episodes of Batman. Well, Aquaman's probably in it more than Blue Beetle. Really? Yeah. What? Aquaman's like the most memorable thing for that show other than Batman, obviously. But anyway, there's like, I think there, I think it's in this show. There's a line where Batman's like talking to a woman and he's like, it's okay, I'm an equal opportunity crime fighter. Or am uh... I, it might be Batman the Enemy series, actually. It is Batman the Enemy. He says it too. I think he doesn't think out one. <laughs> That'd be funny if it was. Let us know. Or no, he says he says it to Red Claw, which you don't know who that is. No, I it was in the Catwoman episode. She's a Ouch. terrorist, and she, oh my god, she's like, "Oh, Batman, what's the matter? Is it because I'm a woman or something?" He's like, "No, I'm an equal opportunity crime <laughs> fighter." It's so great. But yeah, after that, there's the scene like Catwoman's in the museum or something, and Penguin's there too, and Batman's there. I don't remember much about that. But there's this weird scene between Batman and Penguin, and I don't remember the dialogue exactly, but, like, it makes no sense. <laughs> like, they're just saying witty things to each other, and, like, it doesn't line up at all. It's like, I don't know, Penguin says something like, uh, you'll never stop me, and Batman's like, I don't know, he says something stupid. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you be Penguin, I'll be Batman. Go. Or he just says... I think he says, I will... Uh, it says something about winning or something. And it's like, Batman, you... Wait, when have you lost? <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. You know the one time he did lose? When he shoved the bomb down the guy's pants and didn't get to watch him explode. That's the one time he lost. Yeah, same Dude, movie. And also, in that movie, he, he kneecaps so many people with the, 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 the things that spread out on the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. And he just mows <laughs> through that crowd. Like, what is wrong with him? He's a psychopath. Then again, it's because he just sees Jack Napier and he's like, <gasps> "Yeah." So I guess we can get to the end now. So Penguin's like master plan. Did it work? Did he become mayor? No. Oh, did he? 
I don't think so. I don't know. I'm pretty he sure did. he did. If he did, but he wasn't mayor. His whole master plan is to like get penguins to go take over Gotham or something. Like he has penguins with missiles tied to their backs. Yeah, I remember that. Army they, of they penguins. They were so cute walking around with those little yeah. missiles. Yeah. <laughs> I think Joker's plan was better than this. Yeah, they 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 slacked <laughs> up in the the planning department. Yeah, that's just hey, I just got ridiculous. But, okay, so I guess we can talk about the Catwoman thing now. So, Catwoman, I don't even remember all the times she died. She died, like, seven times at this point. Good. And then, um, then seeing Batman, her, and Max Shrek, and Catwoman's basically like, uh, you got one more life left, or two more lives left, and then electrocutes Max Shrek by kissing a wire, kissing him through a wire. Yeah. An exposed wire. Isn't rubber, like... Her suit wasn't rubber, though. It was leather. It was latex. Yeah, latex. Le- leather. Pleather, if nothing else. Okay, so... So, yeah, that's how Max Shrek dies, which is a pretty fucking brutal way to die. Yeah, very much. Electrocution. Yeah. And, you know, Catwoman's out for the count, for now. And then Penguin... I don't... I don't remember how exactly. I think Batman, like, punched him through the Arctic World glass thing, and he went down to the sewers, and he just laying there dying. It would have been funny if he would have thrown one of his penguins at him and he just exploded. <laughs> Shoved the penguin down his pants. Yeah, but do you do you remember penguin's death scene in this? Uh-uh. It's so sad. Is it really? Like, he's dying and all the penguins, like, come around him. Oh, and, that's... Like, yes. What like, the fuck? I felt so bad for the little penguins. It's like, bro. Yeah. I mean, where are they gonna go now? Yeah, like, it was so emotional. <laughs> like, this, Jesus. I think this is the most emotional villain death in a Batman movie. I don't know. When Bane died, I was pretty upset. I probably shed a tear. Now you have my permission to die. <laughs> fuck. I was talking about Bane and Batman and Robin. <laughs> did, Not did, even. Did he die? I thought he died when they sucked all the venom out of him. Oh, I thought he was just skinny again. Whoa. Oh, I thought he just died. I don't think so. Uh, I'm going to say he died. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Yeah, I don't think any villain died in that movie. I don't know what happened to Bane, but... Yeah, I'll shut him. Jesus. Well, Poison Ivy died. Good. At the... Yeah, you know, in the cell of Mr. Freeze, he's like... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how they kind of redeemed Mr. Freeze. They should have threw Mr. Freeze's freeze gun in there. <laughs> yeah, <it> just <laughs> like... <laughs> but then again, Arnold Schwarzenegger could have just, like, grabbed her by the yeah. throat and snapped her neck with yeah. his hand, so... Yeah. But anyways, Batman and Robin. I, you mean Batman you, Returns? Batman <laughs> Returns, yes. We're not talking about Batman and Robin. If people want us to talk about Batman and Robin, though, no. my yeah, pleasure. We'll definitely talk about those movies sometime. My pleasure. I'll, yeah, great. It's great I movie. will rewatch those. I will rewatch them both twice. Okay. Yeah, then there's the ending after Penguin's death with Bruce. Just It's kind of like sad music playing and stuff. Uh, Bruce gets picked up by Alfred, and I think they're talking about Selena. Saying something about her, I don't remember what. But then the ending shot, or I don't know if it's the ending shot. One of the ending shots, it like goes to the rooftop and you see a silhouette of Catwoman. Yeah, I remember hearing that one time that it's like Catwoman's still alive in that universe. Didn't they do yeah. comics after this universe ended? Or I say ended, I but made probably. And then I oh. think she's still alive in that comic. Yeah, she. That I mean, that's what that was. Yeah. Indicating. It's, yeah. But because I think she, the whole nine lives things, I think she technically died eight times because she's got one more left or whatever. But Does I don't know. Catwoman normally, like, actually have eight lives no. or nine lives? Okay, no. I was about to say. That's a weird Tim Burton thing. Yeah, okay, I thought so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I heard a theory. I don't, I don't know if this was rumored or if this was actually supposed to happen or what, but I think there was supposed to be a solo Catwoman movie with Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh. And it just never happened, and then we got the piece of shit Halle Berry one. Then again, though, I don't even know if that movie... Do you think a solo Catwoman movie... Well, maybe the, if Tim Burton I was about to say, it. the thing is, if you're going to do that Catwoman, you're going to like have to get Tim Burton to do yeah, it. Yeah, because Tim Burton would make it, even if it wasn't good, it wouldn't be terrible. It'd just be, mm-hmm. alright, sorry, right. it's kind of weird, out there kind of thing. Yeah, so, Tim Burton directed the second Alice in Wonderland, right? Yes. So he either directed or he broke the script or whatever. Okay, if he didn't direct that one, or if he did before that movie, Batman Returns was the only sequel he ever did. Really? Yes. And if he didn't direct that, then it's still the only sequel he ever directed. 
So yeah, uh, would you watch this movie again? I would watch this movie again. I would Most definitely. I would watch this movie again and probably will during Christmas time because it's a Christmas movie, one of the best Christmas movies ever. Um, this says Tim Burton oh, no. signed with Walt Disney to direct two films and the Disney blah blah blah. And oh, he didn't direct the Elvis he didn't sequel. So he's only done one sequel. Yeah, Batman Returns is the only sequel he's ever done. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I've heard rumors of Beetlejuice too for like a couple years, but I feel like he only does. But that would be amazing if he did do Beetlejuice too, because it, his only two sequels would be would with be Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that would be great. That'd that's the only reason he got cast as Batman because he was working with Keaton on like be- with in Beetlejuice and like dude, they had great chemistry. Have so. you ever watched Beetlejuice before? No, I need to. That I've wanted to for a little bit. Because that's I love Michael that's Keaton. one of those movies that's like if you haven't watched it, you really need yeah. to watch it because it's it's so good. Yeah, like I'm not building it up. It's it's one of those movies also, though, you got to re- remember it was made in, like, the 80s or 90s or whatever. Yeah, I think it was, so, like, 86 or something. Yeah, so it's a little choppy from here and there, but... Well, I mean, 89 was, like... I think it still holds up. I think both these movies still hold up overall. Yeah, it's just... They're... they're, they're I don't know. I don't know how, like, kids today would take it, but, like... A few years younger than us and, like, up... Yeah, we're gonna love it. Because we didn't, like... I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, that was uh, the Tim Burton Batman movies. So they're they're good. Yeah, they they're. they're I kind of think they're great. They are great, especially for the time. If you had to, out of all the Batman movies that you could think of, where do these fall for you? I really need to watch The Dark Knight Rises because I don't know if I like that or Returns more. Honestly, I would but put it above Returns from what I remember. That, that's above what I think them. too, but I need to like watch them closely. But The Dark Knight's first, then Batman Begins, just live action, then Batman 89, then The Dark Knight Rises, then Returns. I would bump everything down one and put Batman and Robin at the top, but mine yeah. would be the same. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, I, f- I know you forgot. Yeah. yeah. I forget, it's the best movie. It's just sometimes it's so good that you can't even put it in a list compared to these other movies. It's just... Yeah, so I'm sure we'll talk about the Schumacher movies sometime, who knows when. Depends on when we want to subject ourselves to watch Val Kilmer be... Yeah, because Batman and Robin is going to be a breeze. Oh, yeah. It's, we the... totally didn't fall asleep one time when we went to watch that movie. Fell asleep in the opening credits and totally didn't wake up at the very ending credits. Yeah, that definitely didn't happen. No, because the movie's so good. Bye! <laughs>